Greetings and salutations, welcome to my amazing show. Once again, I'm your host, the great and mighty Mr. Perez, and today, I'll be playing some more Deadly Premonition 2, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in. So yeah, last time we just learned Lena's story, and I think we're at the end of this episode, so let's wrap it up. Oh, that was quick. Again, probably is late at this point. Zach, the Clarkson family tree is nothing like we thought it was. We need to reorganize everything we've uncovered so far. All right, I start over from scratch, huh? She was so tired she fell right to sleep. Hey, Zach, I'm in a very difficult spot right now. I feel like this case is heading in a direction that will be extremely unpleasant for her. Because it most likely is. I've never felt anything like this during any of our cases thus far. Okay. First, let's go back to the beginning. Lise Clarkson's body was found hanging under a bridge over the bayou, in a deserted spot close to where the bayou meets the Mississippi. The one who fired the pistol at heaven surely had no idea what he would find there. Speaking of which, Zack, Chuck, the man who started this race we're running, what's his occupation? He's a crawfish farmer. That's right. He's a crawfish farmer. And after chasing a poacher's boat that crossed over into his farmland, he went up the bayou and was fortunate enough to find Lisa's body. I doubt it was a very pleasant experience for him. But if not for his discovery, Lisa's body might have started rotting out there. He's a difficult person to be sure, but I don't think he's a bad guy. He's just an honest farmer. Chuck said something peculiar. He claimed the Clarksons were a little better when their son was still around. I don't know exactly what he meant, but we ended up meeting the person he was talking about, didn't we? We did. Under very unexpected circumstances. Leonard Clarkson. He ran away from home, found his true self, then changed names. Sozak. Do you remember her name? Lena. Helena Doman. The townspeople call her Lena. She was also known as Professor R while she plotted against the Clarksons. She's the mother of the new drug known as Saint Rouge. She must have also had a group of followers who worshipped her fanatically. I can see it now. Lena sprinkling down the red powder, corrupting every last pure and innocent girl in town. Lena mentioned her plan each time we met. She must have taken us for utter fools, Zack. She thought she was always one step ahead of us, and that we'd never see the full scope of her plan. Hmm. Well, her plan isn't complete uh, She yet, won't do that. And I know we can still stop it. That's why we need to learn all we can about her. Her alias was Professor R. And she was well learned in the areas of medicine and fire dynamics. By the way, Zack, do you remember what weapon Lena used to murder PJ? Yeah, a bomb. Correct. She used a miniature bomb. To tell you the truth, she surprised me. That bomb was so well placed. 
It left hardly any damage on the building itself, yet still did amazing work on them. Lena should have used that brain of hers for something more productive than that saga of revenge. For example, reviving Lucare's economy from the industrial sector. Widen your perspective, and you'll see that Louisiana is an industrial treasure trove. With her intelligence and her charisma, I'm sure she would have found some amazing opportunities. Such a tragedy. Zach, there's one more important matter we need to think about here. There is? Galena Clarkson, who was murdered in jail. Her body was dismembered, then rearranged into a V-shape. Patty and Melvin claimed it was a severed roots killing, but that doesn't make sense to me. And PJ Clarkson disapproved of it when I met him in the other world. He saw Galena's parts lined up and was overcome by an inexplicable fear. Tell me, who killed Galena? Hmm. Yeah, I guess we really don't know. Unfortunately, we don't have the answer to this one yet. And it's too big a problem to solve with mere speculation. The answer to this question may lead to a major turning point for this case and the final turning point for this story. You know it's true, Zach. I only hope it doesn't push us down an avenue we didn't plan on exploring. Cool and good. Oh yeah, the eldest daughter. Hey Zach, do you remember PJ's last words? I believe so. Lena had intercourse with her older sister. Her own flesh and blood. This means there's still one more person out there who inherited PJ's blood. Oh, what's this? Oh, fucking poachers, now I gotcha. Caught you red-handed. Sweet. I'll take an S. Let's save. Soon. I'm almost there. Just... Please, someone. Stop that. Just water or something. Huh. 
Well, he doesn't look good. Oh. 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 Let me try and summarize this. Helena Doman was the mastermind behind the entire incident, but Helena Doman was actually P.J. Clarkson's son who had severed ties with the family. Helena was also known as Professor R, the mother brain behind the drug known as Saint Rouge. That's right. She was responsible for everything? Not everything, but most of it. But if you'd already figured out that much, why did you continue to stay in Lucare? I'd like to look, Illyria. Because we had to. You had to? Whatever for? The goddess was still there. The goddess? The goddess of fertility. Lise Clarkson's body. <laughs> Not her. She Someone was else. as beautiful as a goddess, but she wasn't the goddess. She was just a tragic victim. Then who is the goddess of fertility? The person at the root of this case. Is it some kind of metaphor? For example, the vast wealth that the red powder yielded? <laughs> the goddess of fertility embodied abundance on the outside. But on the inside, she was a hollow void, and that void was threatening to swallow up all of Lucare. Mm. Oh. Uh -oh. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <sighs> 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 Are you okay, Mr. Morgan? Morgan almost sounds like a prophet talking about the end of the world. Vague, elusive, and intent on deceiving those who listen. But every now and then he adds an interval of truth. Patricia Clarkson is one of those. She's something special. Something irreplaceable to him. The logs in the center look far more burnt compared to the rest. Almost looks like they were used in conjunction with some kind of accelerant. Did you recently burn something there? It's our fireplace. We're free to use it as we please. I see traces of resin. Which leads me to believe you burned up some sort of toxics. It doesn't matter what kind of fireplace you have. Burning anything other than firewood in it is dangerous. Next time, don't burn it up at home. Dispose of it like you would any other non-burnable refuse. Especially if it was something like a smartphone or a USB memory stick. <laughs> non-burnable refuse like a smartphone? Let's be serious here, Belle. That's exactly the sort of data one needs to thoroughly immolate. Remember what you learned at Quantico. <sighs> By the way, you're still searching for Patricia, yes? Yeah. You don't need to worry about that. We're investigating. In fact, we've almost reached our goal. We have? We just need to find some conclusive evidence. Oh, we sincerely hope that's the case. Hard to believe, though. After all, so far you've just been barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree? That's right. You shouldn't be wasting time here. You should be out there, looking for her. Then I'll just ask you straight away. Do you know where she is? No, we don't. But we can feel her when we close our eyes and become one with the world. It's very faint. But we can see her. We can see Patricia. 
Are you trying to distract me again? Or do you really expect me to believe you're clairvoyant or something? <laughs> what do you think we are, X-Men? It's metaphysical offender profiling. Yeah, it's not like Professor X. He actually asked me where Patricia is? Does he have full confidence that we'll never find her? Fine. I can deal with that. I'll just ask him everything I can about the Lucare case. So you think Galena was murdered by Helena Doman, her own brother? No, not her. Galena was someone else. Then who killed her? It's written in the report, isn't it? Yes. But I'm asking you. Would you mind answering me in your own words? You see, I find your entire story highly suspicious. <sighs> it's a complicated matter. Extremely complicated. By the way, how did the FBI find Lisa's body after 14 whole years? That's none of your business. Are you saying they just happened to be investigating the Clarkson's cold storage warehouse by pure chance that there was some undercover terrorism plot afoot there? I said it's none of your business. Well, then we'll just have to guess. It was an anonymous tip, a tip related to Saint Rouge. Did we hit the nail on the head, Belle? <laughs> But that's not what we want to know about. After all, the FBI gets hundreds of tips every day. Right, my fairy? It was always that way, even back when we were on duty. Here's what we really want to know. Why, out of all those tips, did you select that one? Would you tell us that much? That's a good question. Well, what urged you to make a beeline straight for this case? That's None of your business. Don't let him draw you into his game. Stay calm, Aaliyah Davis. The future influences the present just as much as the past. You asked me why I spent an entire two days observing you before I came to speak with you. Well, here's why. Over those 49 hours, I observed the intervals between your actions, when you were neither doing something nor doing nothing. I intently studied your intervals between action to action, and action to inaction to action. People reveal everything during the intervals between their actions. They do? For example, when you eat alone versus eating with someone else. The most prominent differences always appear when someone either begins or finishes eating a meal. And since these are unconscious actions, they can't be consciously hidden. When you prepare to eat or finish eating, when you move in to clean up, when you pick up a book or close one, when you raise a cup of coffee to your lips. Human actions speak volumes. Not even the person doing the actions is conscious of them. That's what lies in those intervals. That's my modus operandi. And here's the conclusion it helped me reach. There's one other person in this house, isn't there? <laughs> You're incredible, Belle. You outdid all our expectations. Impressive, to say the least. You're right, Belle, but only half right. Half? You should still be proud, though. Honestly, we never thought you'd make it this far. Okay, but what does half right mean? There's like half a person You've here? You've got real talent. <laughs> Most of what you say is disjointed and illogical. If this goes to court, I won't let you claim that your testimony is inadmissible just because of your little indulgence there. Fine by us. We can even put it in writing if you want. We won't run or hide. Will we, my fairy? Where's the paper? I know I had it around here somewhere. Where? Where is it? Oh. We're fine. Hey, everything okay? What's going Man, on? You took out a here? long time to shit. Oh, don't tell me. 
He's just suffering from nausea. I was more worried about you. You were in there for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Ever since you got here, I've been all backed up. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, can you stand? Oh. Is this a sign from the coffee? What, what could it be? What is it trying to tell me? A dragonfly symbol. I think. Is that a dragonfly? Footsteps. Big footsteps. Footsteps. Big f footsteps. Some odd fella was following her around, stalking her like. That poor girl, Lise, she was a druggie, and she was into the really bad stuff. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess, mentally and physically. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. You okay? Hey. We're fine. Just feeling a little tired. Would you take us to get our medicine? Uh, sure. It's in the bathroom, right? Whew. <sighs> Seems like he's calmed down a little. We should let him rest for a while. One more step and I could have cornered Morgan, but so be it. I can still keep investigating even if the owner of this chair isn't present. Simon okay. Jones, what a piece of work. How can anyone have such bad timing? Let me get one thing straight. You started this investigation based on an anonymous tip, right? That sounds right. What kind of a tip was it? Phone or mail? What does that matter at this point? <sighs> this may surprise you, but these kinds of details really eat me up inside. I always get hung up on the most insignificant of details, especially during the most vital times. For example, uh, you know how people go to bed early the night before they have a big job? That's exactly the time where I start focusing on, on, on meaningless nonsense. Hmm. When did I last clip my nails? How long is my milk good for? I just can't help myself. It's just the way I am. Hmm. It was sent in an envelope, postmarked December 28th, sent out from Louisiana. What did it have inside? A postcard with a dragonfly on it, a wrapped sample of Saint Rouge, and a note. What did it say? No. Investigate the Clarksons. F.K. F.K. That's it? Yes, that's it. Who's F.K.? Anonymous tip, remember? It's obviously just a fake name. Did you confirm that? Of course I did. Louisiana has a population of 4.5 million. The FBI database has a list of 6,682 individuals whose initials are FK. One out of every six individuals is a child under the age of 14, born after 2005. The remaining 5,500 people include those whose initials changed after they married or incarcerated individuals. After subtracting those, I was left with 3,800. That's when I stopped searching for FK, and I decided to change up my approach. It isn't important where the tip came from. All that matters is solving the case. I got this far by taking the most efficient route possible. Are you satisfied now? Yeah. Thanks. I feel a lot better now. Yep. It all checks out. Shouldn't you look after him? I gave him his meds and let him rest. Let him rest where? In the bathtub. It happened to have a blanket and a pillow in it. What? But... Why? I don't know. Maybe he sleeps in the tub. I feel like I saw that once in some vampire movie. I don't know what you're talking about. More importantly, how long has he been like that? It's stage four cancer. He's had it for a while now. No. 
No, I'm talking about his face. It looks as white as a sheet. You can even see all his veins. I've never heard of any cancer side effect like that. Uh, who knows? But now that you mention it, he started going really crazy around the beginning of December. In what way? He changed pizza places. What? This better not be another joke. <laughs> yeah. It's not, really. It's not. Before December, he always used to order delivery from a Chicago-style joint all the way up near Medford. But one day, he took one look at one of their trademarked red boxes and totally lost it. Red, huh? You better believe it. He started screaming gibberish at the pizza boy and chased him away. Next thing I know, I see him toss the pizza box out his window. Do you think that's when his fear of red began surfacing more prominently? Beats me. I mean, there isn't a better Chicago-style pizza place that delivers around this area. How could someone give up on that just because they don't like the box? I don't get it. <sighs> Were mm. you serious for even a fraction of that story? The letter that was delivered to me bore the Clarkson symbol. A post single sheet of paper ordering me to investigate the Clarkson and... And the Sun Rouge. Come on, let me get it. Damn, why can't I get it? I guess I'll do this first. Ready to spill the beans? I'm afraid of thunder. Happy now? Katrina? All right, I'll stop. Good. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's get back to the investigation. No, no, no. Hold on. Now that I think about it, that doesn't really qualify as a soft spot. What I'm looking for is more... How should I say it? Adorable? Adorable. You know, something that would make you blush. There's gotta be something. Please, I'm begging you. <sighs> I love koalas. They're just so cute, I can't resist them. All I need to do is look at a picture of one and fuzzy wuzzy swim all over me. I Aww. mean, the way they look, the way they're shaped, the color of their fur, I mean, even down to how they only eat eucalyptus. I just love everything about them. Once I get some time off, I'm gonna travel to Australia and hug one for real. That's one of the top five goals on my lifetime to-do list right now. <sighs> this conversation never happened, is that understood? I guess there we go. So, why did you decide to take this case? Because it's my job. Really? I don't buy it. Why not? You aren't just following orders here. You've got way too much emotion invested in this. Some kind of special emotion. There's no use trying to hide it. Despite how I may look, data analysis is my forte. I know how to see through lies. I don't mean to be nosy, but would it kill you to confide in me a little? I didn't manage to live this long simply because I'm fiendishly handsome. And besides, we're going to be tiptoeing across a thin line of legality with the rest of this case, so I'd prefer to have some probable cause. That way, at least I can back you up when you need me to. There exists in the world a single path along which no one can go except you. Whither does it lead? Do not ask. Go along it. You're pulling out Nietzsche at a time like this? Come on. I have a little brother. After overdosing on a certain drug, he was thrown into rehab. He's been clean for two years now, but he still won't utter a single word. All day long, he's plagued by hallucinations. He can't tell if he's dead or alive, if this is reality or if it's all a dream. San Rouge? That's right. The doctor can't tell what's causing his condition, so they can't treat him. He just told me to prepare for the possibility that I may never get my brother back. 
This was his. I bought it for him after he graduated high school and found a job. He never got a single chance to wear it, though. Someday, I believe that he'll get better. And I'll get to see him put this on and head out to work. So, you think that if we nab the person behind all this, we may figure out how to conquer the addiction? Right. Hmm, that's fair. You really think it'll be that easy? I don't know. But I can't just sit around and do nothing. He's the only family I have in the entire world. What about your parents? When I was only 13, Katrina took them, leaving my seven-year-old brother and I behind. I'm sorry. It's fine. I've already dealt with my past. Now I'm just working as hard as I can to complete the duty I've been given. Yeah. Hey, Agent Jones, I just want to double check one thing. You didn't find anything in the bathroom. Nope. Nothing in there. It must be the bedroom then. Just like I thought. Are you serious about this? Huh? Now you're having second thoughts? Well, not exactly. Then what? I understand how you feel, but he's got an incurable disease. And he used to be one of us. So? The truth he's given us so far could all be completely fabricated. He's a genius lone wolf agent who solved nothing but difficult cases during his years of active duty. That's what they told me at Quantico, at least, over and over again. I had to listen to them talk about how no one could ever replicate the kind of work he did. But let's be real here. You saw his face, didn't you? It was inhuman. It looked like the face of a killer who's been possessed by death. Patricia Clarkson is here, in the next room. Only a single wall away from us. After 14 years, he went back to Lucare, kidnapped her, and imprisoned her here. He's trying to complete something big right now. Something that's deeply connected to Saint Rouge. Mm. Oh, is she gonna try to break in? Yes, she is. What is all this? Oh. A lot of clocks and stuff. Pictures of people from Lucare. And this wall is dedicated to Greenvale. All the deceased have been crossed out. Sheriff Melvin Woods. Oh, so he is gonna die. But who's under the sheets? Lise Clarkson? Where's Patricia? That's our altar. What are you doing? Zach jump scare. Seed or a bit of Saint Rouge. York, Agent York, York, Agent York, York, Agent York. Hey. Agent York! Agent York? Hey! <laughs> hey, Agent York. Hmm. Uh, 
You're Lise Clarkson. No. What's wrong? You're acting weird. Sorry, Patty, I'm fine now. More importantly, do these red seeds come from some kind of plant that grows around this area? I don't know. What do I look like, a botanist? This isn't your average backwoods town. The Clarkson's ego and control has been piercing the town's heart like a massive dinosaur bone. But over this past century, time has been busy eroding the beast's power from within. And now, the very thing that once fortified this town is polluting it with putrid gas and rotten marrow. Zack, this is the point where it all collapses. Search for clues. Okay, let's see here. Hmm. The growth is all missing from this particular section. It wasn't just cut away. She used fire to burn it out. Everything was planned so meticulously, as if she wanted to show this altar to someone. But who? That's why Chuck ended up discovering it. These bridge beams have a very unique shape to them. One straight support in the center, reinforced by V-shaped columns coming up diagonally from the... Did this bridge always look like this? Oh well, I'm sure it has nothing to do with this case. Let's move on with the inspection, Zack. I sure hope not. There's a flat, evenly weighted stone here. I bet we could use this to score an amazing stone skipping record. Let's give it a try whenever we get some downtime. For now, we need to focus on this investigation, Zack. Zack, this is an ominous sign. Among all the different footprints here are a set made from engineer boots. The engineer? Yes, I know, I know. He probably only made them when he came to inspect the scene. I'm sure that Patty and I left our own set of prints here too. But how do you explain the set that's inside the yellow tape? Mm, aside from ours. There's some decomposing cloth here. We saw the same type of cloth at the sugarcane plantation. They must have used that cloth when they transported Lisa's body. A coffee bean bag. Case about mundane evidence like that. This isn't a case that can be solved by gathering the kind of evidence we'd need to submit to a court. This altar is covered in burn marks, but there's hardly any residue left. There's no way for me to tell what was burned here. I could send it home for analysis, but is that really necessary? It'll just end up giving Abrahams more busy work. More importantly, Zach, someone who knew how to manipulate fire was behind all this. In other words, these roots prove that Lena was here. And that's enough for me. After Lise Clarkson was murdered, her body was put back together here, just like how Galena's body was dismembered, then rearranged within the holding cell. Lena Doman and PJ's bodies were also blown to pieces in the end. Perhaps that's the nature of the curse that's taken hold of the Clarksons. What do you think, Zach? Is there any significance to these similarities? Hmm. Oh, I didn't get to look at the red seeds. Truck. You already solved the case, yeah? So go on! Get your ass out of town! Hmm. Why do you think I solved the case? Hey, Chuck, can you see the altar from there? I'd see the whole damn thing, along with your stupid ass standing there. 
trying to act all smart and shit? You told me that the poacher's boat you were chasing disappeared around this area, correct? Yeah, that's what I said, all right. What, you forget already? If you're just gonna waste our tax dollars out here, least you can do is catch them goddamn poachers. Fucking FBI, go and make yourself useful for once in your damn life. Chuck, we don't chase down fishing boats, unless it's a terrorist boat that plans to overthrow our government, that is. Huh. Then stop acting all leery, like I ain't being truthful or whatever. I'm busy too, you know. So long, FBI. Zack, he just taught us what the true purpose of this altar is. He did? It was built here so that the ritual could be watched from a boat in the bayou. Yeah, so people could see what it. What do you mean? They could have just walked out here. There's no reason why they had to watch it from a boat. The goddess of fertility, Patty. Ah, <laughs> uh, Nuggin. Another vision. Or Oracle. <laughs> The goddess of fertility. A fine name indeed. So much blood has been shed, yet you remain in this town. Surely you know why. Of course I do, Hoondan. My work here isn't finished yet. You know, I could really use one of your oracles right now. <laughs> You're more fun than I thought. Here's the oracle you ask for. Listen with your heart. Okay. Speak to the 17 comrades who saw the birth of New Orleans. Feel the holy Allah, the giant lady's finger points down toward your goal. The entrance to the forbidden. Poetic forbidden. and graceful as ever, Hoondan. <laughs> Hoondan's oracles are leading us toward the core of this case. That's the one thing I'm sure of. But don't misunderstand, Zack. I'm not blindly following him. I only follow my intuition. Metaphysical offender profiling. That's all there is to it. Okay. The 17 comrades must refer to some area that has 17 of the same thing in it. We may need to use his... That's it. This? The French established the colony of La Nouvelle Orléans in 1718, just about 300 years ago. The only 17 comrades that would have been around back then are the 300-year-old oak trees along this road. A majestic road lined by oak trees. Come on, let's go ask these sages of Lucare for some help on our investigation. Zack, the Holy Allah is a shockingly simple metaphor. Especially considering the quality of the oracles we've received thus far, it seems as if Hoongan's poetic muse is finally running dry. The great thing about us Americans is that we can recreate our homeland anywhere. We're happy to transport crunchy ba- Zack, there's no Allah. Don't think so hard of- The Holy Allah refers to that one thing we see so often in American- t The one great thing, thing about us Americans is that we can recreate our homeland anywhere. Happy to transport crunchy bacon across the deserts of Africa. That's it. There we go. The Holy Allah refers to a water tower, specifically that water tower with its Clarkson family crest. It must be hiding some sort of clue. Let's fill the Allah and see what it yields. Oh, that's it? Well, what about the other half? Zach. What do you think the giant lady's finger is? I'm at a loss. I never thought one of Hoongan's childish riddles would force me to think so hard. But, oh well. I'm sure that as we deal with the rest of the oracle, it'll reveal itself to us. W what? Is there something on my face? Listen no. carefully, Patricia. 
As my skilled assistant, I trust you a great deal, so I want you to answer me honestly. Answer what? Do you have any idea where Melvin might have gone? No. He didn't seem to be acting or talking differently than usual? No. I don't think so. Okay. I believe your words. Zach, we have a lot of work to do. It feels like we're finally approaching the climax here. Okay, go to the trees. Yeah, let's take care of those trees first. trees. Memorial Oak Street. What do you have to say, tree? <laughs> Zach, do you sense that? These trees have watched over this land for the past 300 years. Long before the Clarksons built up their town, these trees were here. If they could speak, I wonder what they'd have to say about them. Has there always been a different number of trees on each side? Yeah. I heard that by the time our town came along, there were only 17 left. 17 trees. What's this? A general from the south might have cut one down during the Civil War. Intriguing, Patty. Why did he cut one down? I don't know. Folks say he planted a red tree in its place. I don't know if that's true or not, though. Zach, the shape of these seeds. Ah. They look just like the ones we saw Let's at Lisa's see. altar. Patty, it appears that legend about the red tree wasn't a total lie. The first tree is withered and gone, but the shells from its seeds remain. Perhaps that red tree left some descendants somewhere else. Huh? Ah. A dog? Zack, he seems to know something that we don't. Doesn't it seem like he's trying to guide us somewhere? Dalmatian. Um, what? That's not Willy, is it? It's Change gotta be a different plans, dog. Patty. Let's go on a little stroll with that Dalmatian. Follow the Ewe Dalmatian. Where are you going, dog?
At least we're close to the water tower, though, so... What the... There's something red in there. That's definitely a red tree. Oh, it's a lake. Is this the red tree that General planted? No way! This is a maple tree! A maple tree? Then it shouldn't be red at this time of year. You're right. That's strange. It's very odd. It sticks ago, out. My mama and daddy used to come here together a lot. They told me they used to go on dates here, back before I was born. Mama would make sandwiches, then they'd come here and eat them together. My mama was really pretty, you know. When I was a kid, I believed she was a real goddess. Under the boughs of a legendary tree that stayed red all year long, a small miracle was born. One man managed to win the heart of the most beautiful girl in the world, and they call him Melvin Woods. Looks like it's time to move on. What a fantastic guide we managed to find. He actually waited for us to finish talking before taking us on to the next spot. Now that's a good doggy. Yeah. Fix. Fix it later. Screw her off of my chair. Can I escape?
The hell did you, that dog just go in a circle? going it's definitely taking a while to get there a red tree. Another red tree? Hey, Patty. How would you rate this creation? Not bad, I reckon. They made good use of its natural form while also pulling out the soul from within. The artificial color also looks pretty. You don't um, usually see this level of harmony. Something unnatural always ends up getting left behind. Ah, oh, it's fake, isn't it? Zach, did you catch all that? She sounded just like the curator of an art gallery in New York. I think we may have just uncovered a new side of her. But unfortunately, I can't see anything artistic about it. Honestly, it looks insane to me. That's all I get from it. And there's no way that this is a descendant of the tree that the general planted. No way at all.
I got here before you did, dog. This tisk, so slow. He looks definitely getting his steps in as Daisy's doing this. That's a decent chunk of change. a dog. <sighs> it appears that we've lost sight of our guide, Zach. Hmm. Oh well, let's head back to the last tree. God damn it. We've been in this town for longer than we originally planned, haven't we? Oh no, I'm not complaining. I'm used to living out of a hotel, and I love southern food. There are some inconveniences, though. There's no movie theater in this town, nor is there a video rental store, and the TV in the hotel room doesn't get any of the on-demand movie channels. We'll just have to get lucky and encounter a movie being shown on TV. The movie environment in Lucari is no different from that of the 70s, Zach. No, they don't have a movie theater. So I suppose it's even farther back than that. But it's true that these are the times in which... Lena Doman 
AKA Professor R. How could such an intelligent person like her suffer such a tragic downfall? Does the South really corrupt people like Patty said? This sunlight certainly seems capable of breaking someone down. No matter how you try to resist it, it's so hot it feels like I'm burning up, but that doesn't explain it. Perhaps we really do need to focus on the Clarkson bloodline itself. Everything in this town, Why do you think the Clarksons chose a dragonfly for their family crest? Zack, we can't fall behind this time. We need to stick close to him. This disc. There we go.
Mm -hmm. How come this dog gets to walk through these corrupts and I can't? Oh, probably because you don't get someone to damage them, but still. gotta be where we need to go. Yeah, that looks like a red tree. That's definitely a red tree. Zach, now this is interesting. It looks like a tree that you could find anywhere, yet it's also unlike any other, completely alien. And look how it's weaved its way into the landscape. Almost like cancer cells invading a human body. You might not even notice it unless you're focused on finding it. And this feeling. As I gaze upon this tree, I can feel evil emotions rising out from within me. Why on earth did that Southern General bring this tree into this town? That. I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Do not touch this tree. Got that, Patty? Got it, Agent York. Hmm. She was with the accepting of that. We successfully spoke with the 17 comrades. I feel like they showed us a side of nature that transcends the realms of human knowledge. Next up is the Holy Allah. According to the Oracle, the Holy Allah needs to be filled. We may be due for another childish puzzle soon, Zack. But that's okay. After all, we came all the way out here to the boondocks. Why not enjoy playing by their rules for a bit? So... Gonna go all the way... Here. Hey Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the San Rouge distribution route led us right to Louisiana. Ow. Hey Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the San Rouge distribution. Let's go here. Yes, I know. I know what you're about to say. But that's why we're here. To protect this peace. Isn't that right, Zach?
This is the deep south. I feel it every time that molten hot sun pours down on me. Don't you, Zach? There we go. Water Tower number 14. This thing sure looks tall when you look at it up close. But why do they gotta build it up so high anyway? The height gives them the necessary pressure to pump the water out. Also, building it in a spot where anyone could easily access it would only create more problems. Problems? In a certain Missouri town, they built the water tower low enough that a person could easily climb up to it. And that's exactly where a mass murderer decided to hide the bodies of all his victims. The water tower was so low to the ground that he could even climb up to it while carrying a dead body on his back. Incidentally, they ended up finding a total of 43 bodies. Why that going to be so dramatic? But the part that truly shocked Zack and I wasn't the number of bodies, Patty. What? It was the fact that over the six months from the first murder to when the case was solved, that whole time, the townspeople had been drinking the water. Agent York, look, I think we can climb up from there. Let's go. But, Patty, I was just getting to the good part. So this is our town. Looking down on it from here, it's hard to imagine any bad stuff ever happened at all. Listen carefully, Patricia. You just leave Melvin to me. I promise I'll take care of things. You're grown up. You're more of an adult than anyone else in this town, I guarantee it. But that doesn't mean you have to suffer through everything without ever saying a word about it. Just remember that, okay? Hmm. Zach, it looks like the Holy Allah hasn't been sucking up water properly. No wonder the shower in our hotel room felt so weak. Patty, who manages this water tower? This is Lucare. You should know the answer to that by now. The Clarksons. Judging from their current situation, I don't think they'll be able to give us a timely response. Yeah, any yeah. of them. Yeah. Do you know where the water comes from? Probably Isaac Lake. That settles it. Let's fill the Holy Allah and solve this problem ourselves. I knew you were gonna say that, Agent York. What? 
Now I gotta go around all this foliage. Were you thinking about Galena too, and all the other women we've seen? Clarkson Waterworks Management, Reservoir Number Two, Isaac Lake. Isaac Lake. That's the name of the former head of the Clarkson family. When he retired, they built this lake to commemorate his career. That's why it's called Isaac Lake. They wanted people to remember the power of the Clarkson family every time they used their water, huh? You sure don't miss a beat. Very good at that. The water level's higher than I expected. They probably haven't been out here to check on it since Lise was murdered. I bet that's where the water gets sucked up into the water tower. Alligator. Mr. Alligator. Never thought I'd have to use you to fight a real alligator. Just what does that skeletal gentleman have in mind for us, Sack? Well, let's go fight some alligators. At least these guys are good. Jeez, how many alligators do I have to fight? If 
five shots. Breach of contract, but I'm gonna breach it this time. Wait, I could've just done that, damn. Open the door, Patty! Hmm, shut out that one's eye. Now, Patty! That one's so bad. All right, let's see what's wrong with this. Okay, Zack, let's head back to the Holy Allah. We need to confirm with our own eyes that we've completed the skeletal gentleman's oracle. We've 
been in this town for longer than we originally planned, haven't we? Oh no, I'm not complaining. I'm used to living out of a hotel, and I love southern food. There are some inconveniences, though. There's no movie theater in this town, nor is there a video rental store, and the TV in the hotel room doesn't get any of the on-demand movie channels. We'll just have to get lucky and encounter a movie being shown on TV. The movie environment in Lucara is no different from that of the 70s, Zach. No, they don't have a movie theater. So I suppose it's even farther back than that. But it's true that these are the times in which one always encounters the best movies. It's always been that way, hasn't it? Think back with me. Remember that hotel in the rundown town near Monroeville, just outside of Pittsburgh? I took a shower, and by the time I got back into bed, it had already started Time Walker. 1982, directed by Tom Kennedy. I started watching it without any idea as to what it was about. It instantly got me hooked. The plot highly exceeded all my expectations. Constantly revealing shocking truth after shocking truth, it was a hyper-realism masterpiece. Even after we checked out from the hotel, we couldn't get that film out of our heads. Not even when we stopped by the Monroeville Mall, the primary filming location for Dawn of the Dead. Instead of the living dead, both you and I were totally preoccupied with thoughts of that living mummy. And we were so excited to visit the Monroeville Mall, too. You kept mm. insisting that you were going to track down those kumquats that Roger had eaten. In fact, I'm pretty sure the only reason I took on that case was because I knew it would let us travel out there. Instead, Damn. Time Walker blindsided us. And that's all we could think about. Even when we were inside the mall, we were both off in a different world. There you... Okay. Zach, the holy Allah is filling up. Looks like we'll be able to take a warm, invigorating shower tonight. Patty, are you okay? Um, no. Not really. Why not? Worried about your parents? Well, of course I am. My mom is sick, you know, and she got even worse starting about a year ago. She used to be so beautiful, but now she looks like a completely different person. She can't even get up out of her own bed no more. I'm sorry to hear that. I already hurt you once in the past, and now it looks like I've gone and done it again. No, I know Mama's illness ain't your fault, Agent York. It's more about Daddy. He... He what? Nothing. Just forget it. He what? <sighs> hey! Y'all get down from there, right now! I said get down here, goddammit! Oh, hey, Danny. Hmm. The heir to the Clarkson legacy has come for us, Zach. And he doesn't sound very composed. Oh, well, he's drunk. Alright, I suppose we can hear him out. You rotten little snakes! This is private property, goddammit! Uh, I guess... I could arrest you for drunk driving, but I simply haven't got the time. What? What did you say? Ever since you got here, my whole family... <laughs> now they're all dead. You're Satan. No, I'm just part of the FBI. You came here to destroy the Clarksons. You destroyed them. Satan. Satan? Not quite, Daniel. I'm just an agent carrying out a mission in accordance with federal law. On the contrary, I came to put a stop to all these problems. You might even consider thanking me for it. <laughs> federal law. Mission accordance. <laughs> Do you hear that? Bastard wants me to thank him. <laughs> I, I lost everything. My treasure. <laughs> At least, my old baby girl. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. 
You reap what you sow. God damn it. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you're the new heir to the Clarkson legacy. You could rebuild their empire or resign it to the ravages of time. Do whatever you like, but you'll no longer be able to borrow a certain someone's power and march around like you own this town. You need to accept that and prepare to survive. <sighs> Zack, it's no use. The skeletal gentleman is a strict one, that's for sure. We're going to have to figure out what the giant lady's finger is if we want to continue on with this oracle. Lady's finger. Lady's finger. I'm at a loss, Zack. The only thing that comes to mind is a certain lady in glasses who displayed her middle finger to a truck driver. The student driver who was driving the car that Leslie Nielsen jumped into in order to chase down a criminal. 1988, directed by David Zucker. God the damn Naked me. Gun. <laughs> that car chase was terrific. It felt like we were watching one of our own car chases from the real world. That director must have gotten some advice from actual police officers. Otherwise, I there's no that. way he would have been able to film such a realistic chase. Hey, Agent York, can I say something? If you're looking for ladies fingers, you know that's another name for okra, right? Okra? Another name for okra? Yeah, okra's pretty common here in Louisiana, so most people know about its other name. Huh. Okra. My talented assistant strikes again. You solved the oracle instead of me. Let's hurry over to the okra farm at once, then, and find the biggest piece of okra while we're at it. Hey, Agent York. The key word is giant, so it must be rather large. I'll bet it looks positively grotesque, Zack. And just imagine the stickiness. Oof. I think I'll refrain from taking a bite. Hey, Agent York. Our town doesn't have an okra farm. Oh. No? Okra farm? Relax. Just follow me. I reckon I know where we're supposed to go. Could we just take a take a view in there or something?
this it? This is the giant lady's finger. Okra boy. Okra boy? He's kind of like the town mascot. Okra boy. You're right. No matter how you look at him, he really is a giant lady's finger. But, Patty, there's no okra farm in this town, is there? That's right. Then why did they choose okra for the town mascot? Good question. He's been here for as long as I can remember. Daddy said he remembers Okra Boy being around when he was a kid, too. The plot thickens. Hmm. Zack, doesn't it look like he's pointing at something? Let's follow that white glove. <laughs> Into that building. Patty, that's it. So this used to be the control device for the drawbridge, but it looks like its insides have been replaced with something else. Oh yeah! I remember Daddy telling me about this. This drawbridge hasn't been used for decades now, so the control room doesn't work, and the power's been disconnected. But what if it did? A password that requires three letters? Three letter password? Looks that way. What's this then? There's an H on the top, bottom, and left sides of the leftmost panel. Wait a minute. Patty, trial and error won't get us anywhere. This is a molecule. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, which makes for 17,576 different combinations if we use three of them. Let's try something more efficient. I know that. I was just fiddling with it. So what do you want to try, Agent York? Just leave this to Zach and I. Yeah. This is a molecule. Zach, this password may look complicated at first glance, but you needn't worry. This is a chemical formula. A challenge from Professor R. The H that's tattooed all over the leftmost panel stands for hydrogen. In other words, the leftmost panel represents the molecule you get when three hydrogen atoms merge. All we need to do is figure out which chemicals go in the remaining panel. Try reviewing what we know. We spoke to the 17 comrades who saw the birth of New Orleans, filled the Holy Allah, then found the giant lady's finger pointing toward the entrance to the Forbidden. After we met the 17 comrades, we encountered that ominous red tree. There was... I did it! Haha! <laughs> that must be the entrance to the Forbidden, Zack. You can't touch that! Oh, hey, Avery. Smarty pants scientist said no. Avery Smith. Draw bridge don't work no more. The machine's junk. Yup. You're right, Avery. But don't worry. I got permission to touch it. <sighs> permission? Agent York, you got permission? That's right. That's right. Permission from the President of the United States. Yeah, Bush told me I could do it. The president? Oh, he's a smarty pants. <laughs> okay. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> yup. Oh, won't tell no one, neither. Yeah, you do that. <sighs> hey, Agent York, are you really going in there? 
Yes, I have to, for the sake of the investigation. I'm getting kind of scared. That's a rare word to hear coming from your mouth, Patty. Yeah, you're afraid? Don't see much no in there way. aside from some overgrown weeds, do you? No, that's not it. I'm not scared of the weeds. I'm scared of what you'll find, Agent York. You don't need to worry, Patty. You're my precious assistant, remember? I promise I'll protect you, no matter what happens. Patty, the truth is, when I first saw Okra Boy, I remembered something horrific. You did? The most evil monster I've ever seen, in fact. A monster? Oh, yes. A demon incarnate who plunged New York City into mortal fear. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. I was about to say Ghostbusters. God fucking damn it. Ghostbusters. 1984. Directed by Ivan Reitman. Now that's a film that was filled to the brim with bonafide horror true masterpiece that boasted an honest depiction of just how frightening a real ghost would be. In the guise of a comedy. Even if you watched it now, I'm sure it would still chill you to the bone. First night I watched it, I was too afraid to go to the bathroom alone, so I made Zack come with me. Ah! Hmm. The, the door! Control cabin. What the? Kill the other enemies too.
Zack, I think we found a laboratory. Uh, what's this lab about, though? Hmm. Organs. <laughs> a journal? A research log. No, it looks more like a journal. Look, Zach. This belonged to Lena Doman. I'm leaving behind this research journal for those who will carry on my plan. Hmm. A professor to the very end. This book is filled with all sorts of detailed notes. Hmm. A device. She studied abroad during school. Most likely in order to get as far away from her father's prejudice as possible. Abroad, she studied chemistry and fire dynamics, then cultivated the groundwork for Saint Rouge. Huh. If what's written in this journal is to be believed, Saint Rouge is a naturally derived substance. Naturally. That must mean it's something akin to ayahuasca, the hallucinogen found in the Amazon region. But Saint Rouge wasn't actually produced here. It appears that a special environment is necessary to summon the Red Demon. What kind of environment? Zack, look at this. It says that when Lena was still known as Lenny, she once fell in love with a woman. She fell in love with her older sister. That matches up with what PJ mentioned just before he died. And apparently, they had a daughter. The Clarkson's family tree is far more complicated than I could have imagined. You can say that again. And here it says that the Clarkson's older daughter later fell in love with someone in town and got married. Then she must still be somewhere in this town. Hey, Patty. Did you know about all this? Uh, I don't know. This entry is from right after she became Lena. Zack, what could this mean? A salesman passing through town gave me an epiphany that changed my life. Oh she shit, it's Kason. Until after she met this person. I mean, uh, that was pretty that obvious. Onward, she started fanatically worshipping someone. She also ceases to mention anything more about her older sister. And the word goddess of fertility starts appearing everywhere. A walkie-talkie. Final entry, written just before she headed to the Clarkson's house. No one can stop my plan, not even me. My only worry now is P. I only pray the fool king can stop him. Zack, it looks like we've uncovered yet another new character. Who's the fool king? This is starting to read like a badly written tragedy. And P. It appears that Lena's worried about whether or not the Fool King will be able to stop our investigation and successfully murder this P character. P. Philip? Or Professor? No. It can't be. Oh. Whew. Well, damn it. No! Don't kill him! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Hello, Hoonagan. Oh. Hi there, Hoongan. Oh, Hoongan. Long time no see. Hmm. This is definitely your simplest oracle by far. <laughs> Patty. Now it all makes sense. Zack, we need to hurry back to the hotel and put all this in order. Oh, that was weird. Oh, this gate's open again. I'll just get over there. Hey, want to talk about bridges? Why? I've become obsessed with bridges, Zack. And there's no turning back now. Remember what we saw on our way here? Back when we were driving that hybrid car before we switched over to the skateboard. We passed over the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, the longest bridge over water in the entire world. Remember the sudden downpour that made it impossible for us to see the road? The rain was so torrential that... We found many new truths hidden in Lena Doman's journal, and some of them went far beyond our wildest dreams. First, we should clear up who PJ's first daughter is. She was a complete mystery until now, but after reading Lena's journal, I became convinced of something. She still lives somewhere in this town. Lena's journal stated that this woman married someone from the same town. Did you figure it out yet, Zach? Who is PJ Clarkson's first daughter? I mean, yeah, it has to be Candy. Yes, Melvin's beloved wife and the most beautiful woman in town, Candy. She's PJ Clarkson's first daughter, which means that just like Galena, Candy also carries his blood. Now we know why Melvin said that Galena was a beauty who could attract a lot of attention. Candy had no interest in the inheritance and was also sexually liberated. That must be why PJ ended up coddling Lena so much. Candy is supposedly sick, but she's now become a key person in our case. She must be why Melvin's gone missing. Melvin's beloved wife, Candy, committed a transgression in her past. Zach, what was it? Uh, incest. That's right. Candy had intercourse with Lena, then she gave birth to a child, a child that we know very well. We never heard any mention of her biological father anywhere in town, despite how much these country folk love to spread rumors. I knew there had to be some secret connected to her birth, but I never thought it'd be something like this. It's beyond anything I ever could have imagined, Zack. Next up is the Fool King, Zack. All you need to do is pick out the person who acted most like a fool when we encountered them. Okay, this is pretty obvious. Clear. And it's a painful one to accept, isn't it, Zach? Yeah, it's obvious. Melvin. 
He's got to be the Fool King, the way he's acted from the moment he located Lisa's body up to now. The way Galena was murdered, silenced, without any resistance. His discord with the Clarksons, the words PJ left behind, and the engineer boot prints we saw at the discovery site. It feels like the missing puzzle pieces are all falling into place now. But why did he decide to take part in Lena's plan? According to Patricia, he seemed to be avoiding Lena. But why? There's no way he actually could have believed that the goddess of fertility would come and save the town. Oh. So that's it, Melvin. As you nursed candy, you too became corrupted by San Rouge. Drugs rob people of their judgment. They slowly but surely eat away at their users. That's most likely the reason it took Lena so long to enact her plan. I don't know what to say, Zack. This is absolutely unbearable. Yeah, it's shocking, even. Lena fell in love with her older sister Candy, and the two of them had intercourse. But afterwards, Lena realized that there was a disparity between her body and her mind, and descended into suffering. Finally, Lena left home and decided to live on as Professor R. Meanwhile, Candy fell in love with Melvin, which led to her leaving home as well. I could only guess that Lena and Candy's relationship continued after they left home. Then, their strange love transformed into something else that bound them together in a powerful new way. Lena must have periodically delivered San Rouge to Candy as offerings to the goddess of fertility. It's hard to keep going with this, Zack. You know where it's all leading, don't you? If Lena's plan was to kill off every last Clarkson aside from her goddess, then her next target is PJ's last living descendant. She's in danger. We need to hurry. Yeah, I'm gonna kill Patricia. Zack, the climax is upon us. Whoever hit me in that control room sure wasn't holding back. The blow was so devastating that I passed out instantly. There aren't many people who could do that. Hmm, oh, they hit me right in my head, so my memories are fuzzy. Not my finest hour, Beggars. to say the least. Now, what should we do next? First, we're going to need to refresh ourselves a little. Sunbathing, Zack. Let's go bask in some liquid sunshine that's just as hot as the sun out there. Hmm. Yeah, we gotta get some coffee. Well, first of all, I need a shower. Fresh me now. Some coffee. Zach, let's come back during. Oh, shit, are they closed? I still got a cigarette. Hmm. Let's do here. Oh, here. Oh my 
my lord. You sure look pooped, honey. Hello, Alexis. Yes, someone did quite the number on me. Must have given you one heck of a shiner. Well, let me get you some coffee so you can relax, honey. Yes, oh, thank that's God. it, Alexis. Just what I was waiting for. Would it be possible to get an especially pungent cup? Smoldering with all the heat of the southern sun. Coming right up. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Zack, look. <laughs> Patty. No, Melvin. No. Oh my lord, what are you trying to do? Wake the dead? What's wrong, honey? Oh, I spilled my coffee. Uh, wait a minute. Where is this boathouse located? Oh my lord, what's going on with you? Your poor voice is positively trembling. Just tell me, where is this boathouse located? Uh, there's lots of boathouses around these parts, honey. Your guess is as good as mine. Well, then, can you at least tell me when this photo was taken? Looks to me like it was taken during the Clarkson Campbell wedding party when PJ married his ex-wife, Audrey. There was a building this tall in town back then? Oh, you know what? That must be the cold storage warehouse. That big billboard on the roof is the Clarksons, see? Oh. I bet you'd be able to get a great view of all the boathouses in the swamp from up there. Thank you. That's all the info I need. Would you mind if I borrowed this? Shoot, of course not, honey. <laughs> Thanks for your help. And keep the change. <gasps> oh, my lord. So, the cold storage warehouse, huh? Go to the roof of the court storage warehouse and find the boathouse. I actually... Shit. It just closed. Oh, I won't. Time to go to sleep. at eight. I'll do it here.
But that's what I you can't get so man. Oh, that's more like it. Thanks, mister. Next time. So cold storage, huh? Storage, and it's gotta be this building right here. How do we get to the roof though? There we go. Oh, hey, Danny. And I owe you an apology for how I was acting before. I think I get what you meant now. You'll no longer be able to borrow a certain someone's power. Well, those words woke me up. I need to get myself together or I'll sink. And you save me. <laughs> so, uh, thanks. No problem. Now this is a surprise, Zack. Can a human being really turn themselves around this quickly? Yeah, especially a when they're hangover. Hey, or hungover. Oh, don't say that. I was drunk, you know. I lost my baby girl, my wife, then my father-in-law. I, I didn't know what to do. Blaming it all on someone else was the only way I knew how to cope. All right? What are you here for, anyway? Thought you already investigated this place. I need to go up. I'd like to get your permission to climb up to the roof. Right up to that hideous sign there. Oh, is that all? Well, go on ahead. I know you're a genius agent. If you need to go up there, then by all means. No, oh, Danny, nice. I'm not a genius. I'm a complete failure. I never even gave a single thought to PJ Clarkson's first daughter. I was practically oblivious the entire time. I never considered the possibility that Lena had a child either. And that misstep cost us many sacrifices. But you know all about it now, right? Then just move on. You figured out that it was Galena who murdered Lise, and that Galena was being manipulated by Lena. You proved that my treasure wasn't evil after all. It may have cost us a lot of sacrifices, but that still makes you a genius agent. And that's how I know I can trust you. Wow, that's very nice, now, actually. I don't care if you're FBI. I'm still gonna come clean and say it. Whoever killed my treasure is gonna pay. I wanna track him down, then kill him with my own hands. But I'm a Clarkson too. So I made up my mind. All Clarkson's got a job to do. Which mm. one is it, Zack? Mm -hmm. Patricia must be in the boathouse we saw in that photograph. Along with Melvin and Candy, the goddess of fertility. What I saw at Alexis's restaurant. Not only was my mind still reeling, but the oracle was also rather vague. 
That's a nice P uh, so image. What, we just need to find the same boathouse that we saw in that picture. There's got That's to a, be yeah, another singularity can be considered inside a PNG. it. Let's see. Aha! Zach, that's the boathouse. It's right where the photograph was taken. But I have no idea how we're supposed to reach it. Hmm. Zach? It looks like we have no choice but to head back to the starting line. Let's go and see the one who fired the pistol at heaven. Okay, let's go visit He Chuck. should be able to transport us straight to that boathouse. Remember, his love for justice is so strong that he chased a poacher's boat all the way up the bayou. I'm sure he'll be happy to help us. Zack, stop and just imagine it for a moment. Chuck's face. Once he hears that poacher's boat is actually a shrine housing the goddess of fertility. <laughs> Living the abundant blessings of the Mississippi to your kitchen table. Clarkson Food Delivery Services. What's this? Lease forever. Hmm. Who left this message for her? Zach, you know what? I forgot all about our ten-foot giant. We still have a lot of work left to do in this town. All right, so let's go to Chuck's. Zach, there's the biggest man we've seen in town thus far. Let's talk to him just in case. Do we have to? Okay, I guess we are. Hello there, Avery. I need your help. Would you mind raising your arms up high like this for me? Raise my arms? Like this thank you that's perfect it appears that even with your height you'd have a tough time reaching a spot up that high i love lease yep <laughs> but lease got cold lease turned white my my poor sunlight wouldn't move no more. Avery, I understand how you feel. I'm sure that Lise does, too. <laughs> really? Oh, yes. I guarantee it. Right now, I'm trying to eliminate the cause of her death. But I need your assistance. If you ever see a man who looks taller and stronger than you, I want you to let me know. I will. You bet I will. <laughs> you <laughs> I don't remember we have to make that jump. Do you think Patty's okay? She acts strong, but it seemed like she was deeply distraught. Where did Melvin disappear to? The same goes for her mother, Candy. We never even got a chance to meet her mother. Did they get swallowed up into the Clarkson's vortex as well? We need to hurry, Zach. As of now, Patty could be in date. Oh, I messed up. Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the San Rouge distribution route led us right to Louisiana. There you know we that go. Means. That's more We've like got a it. Hot hand. And Lady Luck's given us far more favor than she ever has before. We just That's still a to ton of hype. about Lisa's murder while sitting in a bar during our vacation in New Orleans. That certainly wouldn't have happened if we had stayed in D.C. They... Howdy, Chuck. Hello, Chuck. The time has finally come to catch that poacher's boat you spoke of. 
Oh, now he wants to catch the boat. Thought you FBI boys don't chase down boats. Ain't that what you said? Unless it's a terrorist boat that plans to overthrow our country? Right. You're exactly right, Chuck. I discovered that boat does contain perpetrators who are potentially capable of overthrowing our country. Perpetrators who are deeply connected to a new drug called San Rouge. And you expect me to help you? Yes. Yes, I need your help. I see you got the balls to match just how big a goddamn prick you are. That's right. Archers can fuck with my form all they want. But the moment drugs get involved, all of a sudden you're raring to go. Guess what? I don't give a shit. I can't solve this case without your help, Chuck. If you're angry about how I acted earlier, then please allow me to apologize. I don't want no apology. Then how can I get you to trust me? You really don't know when to shut up, do you? No. As you can see, I'm busy here. So if you're done harassing me, then, uh, hmm? Chuck, that was amazing. Absolutely incredible. Fantastic. How did you do that? Uh, thanks? <laughs> I don't know. He's so confused. The answer lies in his physical advantage. That's it, Zack. Your stance when you toss makes all the difference. I can't get over how beautiful his stance was. Just what am I missing? You like skipping stones? You know, I always trust a man who knows how to skip good. See, the key to skipping is how close your arm is to the water when you throw. You also need accurate speed, an accurate wrist snap, and accurate timing when you let go. That's why short folk who stay low to the ground and keep a low profile like me can skip better. And that's how I reckon I can trust a man who knows what skipping's all about. Got it? If you want my help, you got to impress me with your skipping. Then I'll lend you my boat. Hmm. I guess I got to get more skips than him. Over five points. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Oh, I messed up. You can might be if you want my ass the I messed up that time. Oh now I remember now the stone, the course, and the rebound time. But the most important thing humble yourself. Humble myself, humble myself, okay. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> that works. <laughs> Yo, was that so bad? Hot damn! Woo wee! You're a natural. That was flawless skipping, all right. Really? Oh, yeah. You got talent, boy. And you're humble, too. Well, I did have a great teacher. That's what helped me to stay low. Yep, that's the key. Gotta keep low profile. Folks can learn a lot about life from stone skipping. Feller's gotta stay humble. Keep himself from getting all arrogant. Know what I mean? Okay, I get you. maestro, I trust you now. Sweet. I'll take you into the swamp or wherever the hell else you wanna go. Wanna shove off now? Uh, cool. later. Fine then, just give me a holler when you're ready. I always trust a good skipper from the bottom of my heart. All right. Pretty sure once I head into that boat house, I'm gonna. I'll pretty much be at the end of the game. So. Let's save for now. Yeah, unfortunately. I can't beat the game today, because, uh. I've got some plans later on tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna go out to a nice little, uh. music event with some buddies of mine. Yeah, it should be pretty fun. 
But yeah, for now, I'll stop here. I think the next time I touch this game is when I'll finally be able to finish it. So yeah, look forward to that. So yeah, in any case though, um, if you enjoyed the stream, make sure to follow me on Twitch and follow me on Twitter. This vlog will be uploaded on my post YouTube channel where you can check out my other vods. And you should subscribe to my main channel. I've got a couple more things that will mean some bodies of mine. Oh, and uh, join my Discord. It's pretty epic. I'll leave the uh, link for it right right here. Or you could find it down in the description of the VOD if you're watching from YouTube. But uh, yeah, in any case though, thank you all for watching. And hopefully I'll see you again next time.